you give your LA, you give a low dose of laser photobiomodulation at your injection site to achieve pain-free anesthesia. That is the rate of osteointegration, laser-assisted implants. If you have a peri-implantitis case, you can disinfect the implant, manage the peri-implantitis also with the laser orthodontic tooth movement you can increase up to 40 percentage of your reduce your 40 percentage of treatment time if you are combining your ortho treatment with laser it's going to be a chair side equipment in majority of the clinic at least by 2025 hi viewers dr prince here welcome to your channel dental treasures first of all we would like to thank you for the fantastic feedback that we received for the previous episode with dr jojo couture your support means a lot to us. This new episode, we look into the importance of lasers in dentistry. So to speak about this topic, we have Dr. Akshay Lal with us. Dr. Akshay Lal is a pediatric dentist and laser specialist. She's a university rank holder in MDS Pediatric Dentistry and completed BDS and MDS from Maratha Mandal Dental College, Belgium. She's an associate fellow in laser dentistry and photobiomodulation with Asian Academy of Laser Therapy, Singapore and is certified in laser dentistry from Cold Germany. Currently, she's running a practice, The Dental Lodge, which is a dedicated laser dentistry clinic and also works as a consultant pediatric laser dentist in Bangalore. She's also the key opinion leader for No Lace Technologies. She's associate with Asian Academy of Laser Therapy, has faculty, and she was the invited speaker for various programs and events. So doctor, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Prince. I'm also happy to be a part of Dental Treasures. So, Doctor, what potential do you see for lasers to revolutionize India's dental culture? That is really a good question to start with, Doctor, because the first dental laser was used in the year 1960. Fast forward to 2003, we are still talking how lasers can be the future of Indian dentistry. I would say there were two main reasons for that. All these days, lasers were considered as better scalpels. All the taglines which were associated with laser dentistry were painless cutting, bloodless fields, drug-free after the surgery. So basically, lasers were a good cutting tool all these days. Now things have changed. Lasers have evolved a lot from just being scalpels. There are a wide range of applications of lasers in dentistry these days. That should be the first reason. And the second one is, people were reluctant to invest 4 to 5 lakhs. I'm talking about the past. 4 to 5 lakhs for a better scalpel in their clinic. So now since lasers have a wide range of application and India has become Atmanirbhar in case of laser manufacturing. They have Indian brands have come up who get the import, uh, parts imported from abroad and they assemble it in India or manufacture in India. These two reasons because the increase of applications and the cut down of the cost will make the laser dentistry the future in India and I would say it is going to be a chair side tool like how an ultrasonic scaler became a mandatory part in a dental chair. Same way the lasers are going to be a chair side equipment in majority of the clinic at least by 2025. It's not too far that lasers are going to revolutionize the Indian dental culture doctor. Doctor what are the different type of uh, laser units which is a available in the market. Yeah, there are different classifications for lasers depending upon various factors. The most common one which we are familiar is all tissue, heart tissue or soft tissue. Again, if you see this was based on how, what they can cut, whether they can cut a soft tissue, whether they can cut all tissue or heart tissue. So we need to reframe this classification in this recent times. We need to have uh, photo medicine lasers which will help you all the healing purposes, medicinal cases, photothermal lasers which will help you do the cutting. These days most commonly used lasers in India or commonly used lasers in dentistry are diode lasers. Erbium yags are also there but then in, as we are talking about the Indian dental culture, one erbium yag to invest in a one erbium yag might be 30 to 35 lakhs. At the same time, a diode laser is more, affo more affordable for an Indian dentist. So an all-purpose all diode laser should be the go-to go for any dentist who is trying to start a general dental laser practice. So they'll help you do photothermal applications, photo medical applications and photo assisted disinfection applications also. So almost all clinical applications of dentistry can be done with the all-purpose diode laser. So doctor, what are some of the benefits of using the dental lasers compared to that of the traditional uh, procedures? So benefits if you see because of the wide range of applications each treatment has got its own benefits. So I would basically divide our dental practice into three main categories or four main categories. One will be surgery. We are doing some kind of surgery, extractions, phrenectomies, opaculectomies or either surgeries 
or disinfections, be it a root canal disinfection, pulpectomy, periopocket, be it a periodontal sulcus disinfection or orthodontic treatments. So these main carriers, if you see, surgery, I need not talk about the advantages of lasers. We all know bloodless, painless, drug free, it's all a lot of advantages in surgeries. If you see disinfections, be it an endodontic canal disinfection or a perio pocket disinfection, studies have compared lasers with the conventional irrigants and they have shown lasers can do very significant better disinfection compared to the normal irrigant like a hypochlorite or something. Same thing applies to the perio also. The third one will be ortho. The main reason people are reluctant or a little bit uh, resistant to the ortho treatment is the pain and the second one is the long duration of treatment. They don't want to roam around with one and one and a half years with the orthodontic brackets. These two lasers have got a solution. One thing is accelerated orthodontic tooth movement. You can increase up to 40 percentage of your, reduce your 40 percentage of treatment time if you are combining your ortho treatment with lasers. Second thing is orthodontic pain management. We have limitations in using painkillers while doing the ortho treatment. All this can be taken care with the use of lasers along with ortho. We have intraoral devices. For that, normally if you have a diode laser, you need to call the patient frequently, more frequently to give the laser doses. So that for that, these companies have come up with intraoral devices which you send with the patient. So once you they pay a deposit amount, you send them appliance with the patient. After they are finishing the procedure, they take back the, give back the appliance and take their money back. So that's how it is done. And uh, one more thing is implants. So implants is the new trending thing in dentistry, very much of uh, commonly practiced. So increased rate of osteointegration, laser assisted implants. If you have a peri-implantitis case, you can disinfect the implant, manage the peri-implantitis also with the lasers. So all these areas, we have a lot of benefits when you're adding lasers as you have to your conventional treatments. Doctor, can you uh, walk us through a typical uh, laser dental procedure from uh, preparation to aftercare? Uh, there is no typical procedure. So the protocol and the setup changes from each case to case. I'll tell you pre-treatment laser, treatment with laser and post-treatment with laser. What is pre-treatment with laser means? You, before you give your LA, you give a low dose of laser photobiomodulation at your injection site to achieve pain-free anesthesia. So that will be your pre-treatment laser application. Once you have decided what treatment, either it is a surgery or your endo root canal disinfection, periodontal disinfection, so that protocol will be different. So how you want to go about with the case, that is one section of the treatment. So once you have finished your particular treatment, second will be the post-treatment laser. Post-treatment laser irradiation is done to accelerate the healing, reduce the patient post of pain or discomfort. So suppose you are treating a root canal with lasers. Once you have finished the procedure, we give one dose of laser photobiomodulation at the apex to take care of any kind of peri periodontitis which is going on, reduce the inflammation, increase the patient comfort, reduce the post-op pain in post root canal pain in patients and all that. Suppose it is a surgery or it is a wisdom tooth extraction, impaction treatment which was done, you irradiate the lymph nodes to improve the lymphatic flow. So by that way, the patient will be having less trismus sometimes no Christmas at all and the healing will be much faster than what we have done. So this, this one protocol you can follow for each case and what treatment you are planning accordingly that treatment protocol definitely varies from case to case. Doctor, what factors should one consider when choosing a laser unit? First and foremost factor to, should be your wavelength because a lot, I get a lot of queries from people, doctor I am planning to buy a laser unit, what power output should I go for, 5 watt or 10 watt. That power should be secondary because wavelength is your drug of choice. Like first you should decide whether you want to go for amoxicillin or erythromycin. Then you decide whether you want to give it for 500 milligram or 1 milligram. Say, same way in lasers your wavelength is your drug of choice and how to decide your wavelength. Suppose you are an oral medicine specialist who want to practice only on lesion healing like in planners, ulcers or TMD cases say that way. For that we have a separate wavelength or it's better wavelength for such kind of treatments. That will be photomedicine lasers. So you have lasers exclusively for photomedicine purposes. Suppose you are a surgeon who want to do only surgeries, then we have photothermal lasers which can be better cutting tools. If you, want, if you are a general practitioner, you want to do almost all applications like surgeries, whitenings, then disinfections, everything. 
So then we have the versatile wavelength which is coming in. That is 810. 810 nanometer is considered as the most versatile wavelength for general clinical practice. So in that you will be able to do surgeries, you will be able to do healing treatments, you will be able to disinfections, whitenings, all treatments. So first you decide what is your kind of practice you have, then decide your wavelength and then you can think about going for watt power output. We have lasers available for 5 watt and 10 watt. So from my personal opinion, we don't need anything above 5 watts to cut a dental tissue, cut any dental tissue, be it a very thick frenum, very thick gingiva, more than that we don't cut anything in the soft tissue. That is the maximum we can go up to. So we don't need more than 5 watts for any of this cutting. So these should be the first factors which should come into our mind when you are deciding your laser unit. So doctor, you mentioned about different wavelengths, this particular wavelength will cut so much. So is there any price range for this stuff? Yes, so as I mentioned, we have photomedical lasers. These photomedical lasers start from 99,000. Mm -hmm. That is a new budget. I told you it has become more budget friendly. So if you want to practice medicine, you can have a laser unit with 99,000, not even a lakh. Mm -hmm. Send photosurgical lasers and all-purpose lasers, you can go up to 2, 2.5. Mm -hmm. In that, you will get the lasers. Then we have dual wavelength options coming in. That will be a little more towards a 3 lakh side. So that is the average uh, price range for a laser unit these days. So doctor, can you discuss about uh, the safety concerns or any potential risk associated with the laser treatment? Yes, uh, potential risk in the sense if I am talking about contraindications, there are no absolute contraindications in using a diode laser. So if you go to articles and read about the contraindications of lasers, you might find you cannot use it in a patient with cardiac pacemakers or an epileptic patient. That is more for a erbium yag or NDIAG kind of lasers where they have pulsations. So anything with an electrical pulse will uh, disturb their rhythm. But we don't use that as we are talking about more about diode lasers which is commonly being used. We don't use that in a regular practice. So for diode Without lasers, there is no such absolute contraindication. Then the safety which we have to take care while using is definitely the eye protection. So you are not supposed to directly view the laser light. So you have to definitely take your eye, eyewear, patient eyewear and your assistant eyewear. That is mandatory. Then the second thing is laser. When you are doing a laser cutting, you there will be evap evaporated cells and bacteria which is coming as a laser plume, that the evaporated thing which is that has to be suctioned. These are the majority of the two safety procedure we should be taking while doing a laser procedure. But then there are like we have to be careful about certain things that is you should not be causing any kind of thermal damage to the tissues that is your trained skill which comes into the matter for that matter if you don't know to use an aerotor properly you will perforate the tooth same way if you don't know to properly cut a tissue you will you have to be careful about creating any kind of thermal damages so that is your skill which is coming otherwise there are no absolute contraindications or safety concerns when using a laser to keep on upgrading throughout our life, beat our operatory, beat our knowledge. So that is our responsibility or uh, commitment to the community of patients which we are treating. Speak no to rented out lasers because first it is found that within a month, within 20 to 1 month of 20 days to 1 month of time, patients are getting their sensation back by increasing the nerve regeneration with the help of me. For faculty, I would not suggest that will help you in any way, that they will just help you how to do the cutting. You can